Rifle Association came out swinging, defiant, paranoid, and utterly tone deaf. The brilliant idea these lunatics had is, let's put more guns in schools. Wow, you got me on that one. I think today the NRA planted a flag on planet Bizarro. And I really do think the NRA headquarters is populated by crazy people. Here is the lobbyist for mass murderers. And he should be ashamed of himself. What he said today was laughable. He sounds as if he's tone deaf. This guy is whack. Wayne LaPierre should resign. Desperate, cornered rat. I think Wayne LaPierre today is out of step with America. Evil. That's the word that just kept popping up in my mind. This is a simple idea from a simple guy that we need not to spend any time talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO and Executive Vice President of the National Rifle Association, Wayne Lapierre. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to be here today among so many friends, and I really appreciate that warm welcome. As you can imagine, I don't get invited to many parties in this town, but, but that's okay. I came to Washington when I was about your age, right back there. I didn't come here to be popular. I came here to stand for what I believe is true. The political elites, they may not like it. The liberal media can keep hating on me, but I'm still standing unapologetic and unflinching in defense of our individual freedom. You know, they can call me crazy or anything else they want, but NRA's nearly 5 million members and Americans' 100 million gun owners will not back down, not ever. I promise you that. The Second Amendment, our Second Amendment, it's not just words on parchment. It's not some frivolous suggestion from our founding fathers to be interpreted by whim. It lies at the heart of what this country was founded upon. Our founding fathers knew that without the Second Amendment and that freedom, all of our freedoms could be in jeopardy. Our individual liberty is the very essence of America. It's what makes America unique. If you aren't free to protect yourself, when government puts its thumb on that freedom, then you aren't free at all. But they insult, they denigrate, they call us crazy for holding fast to that belief. In their distorted view of the world, they're smarter than we are. They're special. They're more worthy than we are. They know better than we do. And if we dare disagree, they'll scorn us, they'll demonize us, and they'll try to shut us up. We will not be demonized, and we will not be silent. It's time. And there are Americans all over this country that feel like you do in this room today. It's time for us to take a sane look at the insanity that's consumed all too much of the media and the political class in this town. They wag a, figure, a finger condemning the NRA. They call us crazy. But no one, no other organization in the world has spent more millions over more decades to keep Americans safe. Our firearm safety training programs, law enforcement training, women's training, hunter education, our child accident prevention programs are second to none, while gun ownership is, is, is at an all-time high in this country right now, 
with Here's the thing. While that's happened, we brought accidents in this country with firearms down to an all-time low. And, and each year, we teach millions of law-abiding people how to use, store, and defend themselves with firearms. We've been training America's military and law enforcement officers since NRA's founding in 1871. And they call us crazy? In December, I advanced nothing more than surrounding our school children with the same level of protection as our jewelry stores and sports stadiums. Armed protection. The vast majority of Americans agree and favor trained armed police and security officers in every school. In a survey, survey, recent survey of all 50 states, nearly 90 percent of teachers and administrators said an armed officer would make their school safer. And, and you know this, there's not a mom or a dad anywhere who wouldn't feel safer seeing a police car in the parking lot when they drop their kids off at school. But, but the powerful elites, who will always have their own security, called our proposal absurd. You know what's really absurd? Not protecting our children at school. Thousands, thousands of our schools today remain vulnerable as ever to the evil intentions of a madman. While Janet Napolitano's Department of Homeland Security offers this from its website. Listen to this. If you are caught out in the open and cannot conceal yourself or take cover, you might consider trying to overpower the shooter with whatever means are available, a narrator says. While the video shows an office worker pulling out a pair of scissors out of a drawer. Scissors? That's their answer? Uh, let's get this straight. To protect our children at school, we recommend a trained professional with a gun. They recommend scissors. And they say we're crazy? I mean, It, it's sheer madness. And here's what the political elites offer instead. A placebo called universal background checks. Yep, that's their big idea. A background check. A check that will always be far from universal, will never make our schools or our streets safer, and will only serve as universal registration of lawful American gun owners. The real goal, and you know it right in your heart, it's the real goal they've been pushing for decades. Criminals won't participate, and the records of the mentally ill will never, ever be part of that check. With all the HIPAA laws and patient privacy issues, the monsters at Tucson, Aurora, and Newtown, those names will never be in the system. And those killers really are crazy. The very advocates and politicians behind this new universal scheme have fought behind the scenes for two decades to prevent mental health records from being added to the check system. I've been in a bunch of the back rooms where they walk in and they go, we can't do this, we can't do this. Their check only includes good law-abiding people. It's going to be people like you and me. That's who their check will be. That's what they're after, the names of good, decent people all over this great country who happen to own a firearm. To go into a federal database for universal registration, of every lawful gun owner in America. 
That's their answer to criminal violence? Criminalize 100 million law-abiding gun owners in a private transfer? Build a list of all the good people? As if that would somehow make us safer from violent criminals and homicidal maniacs? That's their answer? Are they insane? What's the point of registering lawful gun owners anyway? So newspapers can print those names and addresses for gangs and criminals to access? I mean, you know that's happened before. So that a list could be hacked by foreign entities like the Chinese who recently hacked Pentagon computers? So a list can be handed over to the Mexican government that, oh, by the way, they've already requested that list from our government? In the end, there are only two reasons for government to create that federal registry of gun owners, to tax them or to take them. No gun owner, no rational thinking American believes that will have any effect on violent criminals and their right. It won't make anybody safer anywhere. You know, it's troubling and it's saddening how quickly this whole debate has deteriorated from what would truly help make people safer into what has proven to be a decades-old agenda of those bent on destroying the Second Amendment. They've offered nothing new, nothing helpful in making our schools, our streets, or one child in this country safer. Senator Dianne Feinstein admitted that she had her gun ban bill ready to go a year ago, tucked away in a drawer, just waiting for the right opportunity. Really, waiting for an unspeakable tragedy to push your political agenda? Is there any wonder why most Americans don't trust Congress? They're simply not serious about making our kids or our country safer. If they were serious, they'd arrest, they'd prosecute, and they would imprison felons with guns, gangs with guns, and drug dealers with guns, as many as they could find. That's what they do. And that's what the American public wants. But they don't do that. What they do instead is they let them go free. So let's talk for just a minute about this thing called sequestration. Now, I run the NRA, not an economic think tank, but I watch the news, and I see that instead of rational belt tightening, the first thing the government thinks to do, according to law enforcement officials, is let thousands of criminal illegals out of jail. You know what? Normal people all over this country think that's crazy. It's, it's as if sanity itself has been sequestered in Washington. We have all these federal gun laws with stiff prison time, except that the entire criminal justice system says we're not going to do that. If federal prosecutors say, just kidding, normal law-abiding people all over this country think that's crazy. And nowhere, nowhere in this country does that apply any more than Chicago. Listen to this. J just listen to this. Federal firearms prosecutions for 2012 dropped by almost 30 percent from their peak in 2004. Federal firearms prosecutions in Chicago dropped 45 percent from 2010 to 2012. President Obama's hometown ranks dead last in firearms prosecutions 90 out of 90 federal jurisdictions. Out of 76,000 prohibited persons flagged by the instant check system, 13, only 13, were successfully prosecuted nationwide. 
Vice President Biden, and you heard him say it, he said they don't have time to prosecute. Excuse me, don't have time to prosecute prohibited people trying to illegally get a gun? But the Vice President does have time to offer advice to women threatened by an intruder. <laughs> yeah. I I'm going to quote him directly. Just walk out, walk out, and put that double-barreled shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. The Vice President, I know you're smiling, but gosh, the Vice President of the United States actually told women facing an attack to just empty their shotguns into the air. <laughs> Honestly, have they lost their minds over at the White House? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. No doubt the violent predators would love to face a woman armed with a shotgun that's empty. Well, Mr. Vice President, and you feel the same way when I'm going to say it, for four decades you've enjoyed the armed protection of Capitol Police and Secret Service officers, all while trying to destroy the Second Amendment rights of the rest of us. So when it, so when it comes to that right, sir, you keep your advice, we'll keep our guns. And that's what I'm getting in rooms all over America from the American public. I see a lot of young women here today. Here's some more political advice from the elites who seem to think they know what's best for you young women. Some members of the Colorado legislature think women are too emotional to deal with violent attack. Senator, listen to this, Senator Jesse Uli Bari said that instead of using a firearm, you'd be better off using ballpoint pens to stab an attacker when he stops to reload. <laughs> a ballpoint pen? At the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs, officials recommend that women defend themselves against a rapist with passive resistance. Passive resistance? The one thing a violent rapist deserves to face is a good woman with a gun. So, so you see, they call me crazy, and yet the people doing the finger pointing are saying things that are absolutely bizarre. You know, I can't help but think that as Americans, we all want the same thing. We know our mental health system is in shambles. We all want it fixed. We want criminals with guns prosecuted and incarcerated. We want the federal gun laws on the books right now enforced against felons with guns, drug dealers with guns, and gangs with guns. If they would just do that, those violent criminals wouldn't be on their way to their next crime. They'd be in prison. We want our children to be safe and protected. That's why we propose trained police and security officers in every school in the country. And there's not a mom or dad in America who wants to leave their children unprotected. If the Washington elites, if they really wanted the same thing, they would stop trying to demonize law-abiding gun owners all over this country. They would stop trying to convince the American people that all gun owners are potential criminals in waiting. And they would actually implement programs 
that addressed our problems in a real and meaningful way. Put police and trained armed security in every school. Enforce the federal gun laws right now that are on the books. Interdict and incarcerate violent criminals before they get to the next crime scene. Rebuild our broken mental health system. Help the mentally ill by getting them off the streets and getting them into treatment. And for God's sake, leave the rest of us alone. The political class and the media, they just don't get it. In a lot of ways, they've lost track of what this great nation is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be about us and people like us all over this great country. It's always been about we the people, not the political class, all the way back to our founding in our country. Here's what I'm talking about. In a recent closed-door speech to donors, politicians, and media, Bill Clinton spoke about American gun owners. Quote, a lot of these people, all they've got is their hunting and their fishing, or they've been listening to this stuff for so long that they believe it all, unquote. And we all remember Barack Obama's 2008 comments to a room of San Francisco elites. Quote, it's not surprising then they get bitter. They cling to guns or religion, unquote. The arrogance of their superiority requires this reminder. They don't rule us. They don't give us rights. We grant them power. They don't make us safe. We pay to protect them. They don't make us free. We're free already. And as long as we have the Second Amendment, we always will be. We are America. And our politicians are only as powerful as we, the people, allow them to be. Says it all, doesn't it? We are the people. This is our country. This is a fight for our freedom, the freedom that separates us, each one of us, from every other nation in the world. That freedom makes us stronger than other countries. That freedom makes us better than other countries. That freedom. That freedom is now on the line now and in 2014, in 2016, and in every political fight in your lifetime. That is what standing and fighting and defending freedom is all about. When I first came to Washington so many years ago, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to stand for something. This is not an easy place to remain true to your principles. It's an easy place, this town, to want to be liked and want to be praised. It's easy to be swept up in the warped reality that all too often is this town. You, each one of you here today, you're here because you want to make your own difference. Take your own stand. Plant your feet firmly in the foundation of freedom. Don't be swayed by the winds of political insanity. And no matter what the elitists who scorn you say, let, the, let them be damned. <laughs> Fill your heart with pride. Clear your eyes with conviction. This is your time to stand and fight, now and in the next election and the election after that. Now and for the rest of your life, always stand and always fight for our great American freedoms. Thank you very much. It's great to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you.